All right, so we're going to take a look at sections 4.1 and 4.2, Patterns in Graphing Quadratic Equations, and this is actually the second part of our video series on this, and we're going to take a look more specifically at vertex form. Now, vertex form, remember, is of the form f of x, or any y equals g of x, h of x, you know, they're all the new y's. Instead of just saying y equals, oh, we get fancy and say f of x, or g of x, or h of x, and sometimes h of t. So, more on that later. But, generally, we've got a, and then times quantity x minus h squared, plus k, and h and k are your vertex. The only thing you have to remember, don't forget, switch the sign of h when you go to determine your vertex. Now, quick review from last time. We had our pattern for x and x squared. Okay, remember, that's 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9 x and 2x squared had the pattern 1, 2, 2, 8, 3, 18. And then lastly, our pattern of x and 3x squared would give us a movement of 1, 3, 2, 12, and 3, 27. Now, when we're moving, we're talking about moving from the vertex. Now, the first number in the x column is going to, we're going to move 1 to the right or one and 1 to the left. 2 to the right, 2 to the left, 3 to the right, three to the left. Now, the second number, either in the x squared column or the two x squared column or the three x squared column, that's going to tell us to move up or down, and it's going to depend on the sign of the a value. So when we do that, we're going to have to take a look at our a value. So our first one where we have y equals negative two x squared plus three, on that one, we would move down. And then on the one where y equals positive two x plus three, since that one, the a value is positive, that's going to make us move up. All right, so more on that here in a moment. Let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example. Now here, for example, number 10, we've got an a f of x equals negative 3 times the quantity x plus 2 squared minus 3. So let's go ahead and write down what all of our values are for a, h, and k. So how did you do with that? Did you correctly identify a as being negative 3? and h and k, the coordinates of your vertex, at negative 2, 3. Hopefully you got all of those pieces correct. Got to be careful though, remember, don't forget, the h has a value of negative 2. So let's go ahead and get our vertex plotted, because that's our first spot. So negative 2, negative 3, so we're going to go over to negative 2 and then down 3. So the main thing is just make sure that you count correctly. Now, I want to look at my a value next, and that's going to tell me two things. My a value is negative 3, so I'm going to be, the graph is going to be facing down. Now my scale factor is going to be by 3. So over in our chart here, we say x and then negative 3x squared. We're going to start from our vertex. We're going to go to the right one. But instead of down 1, we're going to go down 1, 2, 3. And then the same thing on the left side. We're going to go to the left 1 and down 1, 2, 3. Now, we're also going to go back to our vertex, and then we're going to move to the right 2, so 1, 2 to the right, but this time we're going to go down 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The main thing is that you count correctly. All right? And then we're going to go 2 to the left, and then down 12 again, and that because it's symmetrical, we can pretty quickly see where that is. Now, go ahead, connect the dots. Make sure you put arrows on the end because it doesn't stop from there. And you've just drawn your very first parabola in vertex form using this technique. So here we are with this one. We've got that all set. Now, if I wanted to take a look in a graphing calculator or plot a table of values, then my table of values would actually look like this. So there that is over to the right side of your screen where we've got our table of values for x and f of x. And those would match up with your points. And don't forget, this spot right here in the middle, negative 2, negative 3, that's the coordinates for our vertex. Now, sometimes people, you know, depending on who your teacher is, they may want you to add in that axis of symmetry. So if you need to do that, then make sure that you go ahead and draw that in. Now, when you, when you do draw that, just make sure that it's a dashed line. Now we're going to take a look at our increasing, decreasing, and domain and range pieces again. Now for increasing, again, you want the slope to be positive, so you want the graph to be moving in an upwards direction. And that's going to be here on this left side. So what I want you to do is just write the word increasing along that side. Now if, if that's increasing, then on the other side is going to be decreasing. So 
Now the side that we're talking about is actually the vert and our vertex is at negative 2, negative 3. So on the left side of the vertex we're increasing and on the right side of the vertex we're decreasing. So in interval notation all the x's that are smaller than negative 2 are where our function is increasing. So you would write that like this. So we go from negative infinity to negative 2. Now we're decreasing on the other side of that x coordinate and we're going to be decreasing from negative 2 to infinity. And remember decreasing just means you have a slope that's slanted in a negative direction. Now our domain for all parabolas again that's all real numbers which in interval notation is represented by negative infinity comma positive infinity with soft brackets around the outside. Around the outside. Hmm. Nice soul. Now our range don't forget your range is going to deal with the y coordinate of your vertex in this case. Now, if we take a look at our picture, our y coordinate is negative 4. And since our parabola is below, the rest of our parabola is below negative 4, the line y equals negative 4, then when we write that, we're going to go from negative infinity all the way up to negative 4, because negative 4 is our highest point. So when you write that, you'll write from negative infinity, comma, negative 4, but then you're going to write that with a hard bracket. Make sure you have the hard bracket over at the negative 4. So that's it for the interval notation for each one of those. Now for set notation, there's two different ways depending on textbook and publishers and all sorts of other things. But here's a couple different ways to represent it using set notation. Now we're going to start with a range because our range deals with our y's. And our, we're going to have set notation one way represented as y such that y is less than or equal to negative 4. So again, make sure we include the less than or equal to on that not just negative 4. Now, if we were to write that another way in set notation, then what we're going to do is put an x, or I'm sorry, we're going to put a y in between the negative infinity and the negative 4. So that's, going to, that's what that's going to look like right there. y is such that negative infinity is less than y, less than equal to negative 4. So again, watch yourself, don't be careless, make sure you write less than equal to and not just less than. Now, we go to our domain in our increasing and decreasing. We're actually going to start with the increasing decreasing part next. Our increasing decreasing, both of those deal with the x-coordinate. Now since they are dealing with the x-coordinates, now increasing looks really similar, that interval notation looks really similar to the way the range is written. So it's almost going to be the same setup, but instead of the letter y, we'll have the letter x, and in front, instead of the number negative 4, we'll have the number negative 2. So I think if you see that pattern, you can go ahead and write the set notation both ways for increasing. Go ahead and hit pause and try that now on your own. How did you do? Hopefully you got both of those correct. Now pay attention again, a small detail, make sure you use less than all the way through on this one because when we are looking at our increasing function, it doesn't include the x value of negative 2. Now, decreasing is going to be the opposite of what we just wrote. So see if you can figure that one out on your own, what each one of those would look like as far as the opposite goes. So hopefully, you switched x is less than negative 2 to x is greater than negative 2 for set notation and decreasing and then you went from negative 2 to infinity and you put the x in between for the other way to write that using set notation. So that's set notation, two different ways for representing decreasing for our function f of x. Now for our domain you could write it the fancy way with set notation x such that x is an element of all real numbers which is that fancy r kind of like the p is when you uh, take a look at paragraphs in English class there's a notation for that that involves a fancy r very similar to that so that could be the first way you write it or you could put the x in between negative infinity and positive infinity and write it that way now sometimes there's one other thing that you have to do you've got to take a function in standard form or I'm sorry in vertex form and change it into standard form and that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do next now, one of the first things that you want to do when you write your function is maybe sometimes, you know, some of you might need to expand that x plus 2 to make it look like it does in the second step there. Sometimes people will be able to do this next step here in your head. 
Now when you expand the x plus 2 and x plus 2, that's a perfect square that we're going to end up with. x plus 2 times x plus 2 gives us x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to take the negative 3 and we're going to distribute that to each one of these terms. So then that will give us f of x equals negative 3, x squared plus 12x plus 12. Now don't forget that minus 3 hanging out on the end because we're going to need him. So then we're just going to clean up these last two terms right here, our constants. So our final value, our final function will be negative 3x squared plus 12x plus 9. Now, that's what I came up with. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you very quickly how to verify that using your TI-83 or 84 graphing calculator. Now, the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and put my original function in y1 and then the answer that I came up with in y2. After I do that, I'm going to hit second and then the graph key. And what I want you to take a look at is the y1 and y2 columns. If those match identically, then that means we did the problem correctly. And as you can see, in the y1 and y2 columns, like those numbers aren't even identical, not for a single one of them. So that means somewhere I made a mistake. Do you see where it is? I bet you do. I made a mistake up here on this line when I distributed the negative 3 through each one of these. Now that's a very, very common mistake to make, but at least this way we can check it and we know whether we did this correctly. So that's really easy to fix, and when we fix it, here's what it should look like. So now when I put the new function that I got in, negative 3x squared minus 12x minus 15, if you notice when I look in my table by hitting second graph, everything matches up exactly, identically. And that makes for a happy person. So if you make a mistake, no big deal. Always want to check, A, did you type your values into the calculator correctly? Because sometimes that's the error you make. And two, the other area, if you did type everything in correctly, the other area is maybe you made a mistake in your arithmetic or algebra. So go back and double check that. No big deal. We all make mistakes, but that's how you power through it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson, and this helps you immensely as we tackle our quadratics. All right, peace out. I'll see you guys soon. Later.